I uh, really glad to be here actually because I just spent an hour and 10 minutes parked on 105 behind something that looked about the size of one of those bridge sections they were trying to get down the road and no way around it. So, and then I came up here to the uh, garage full sign. So I'm, uh, I'm glad you didn't have a 30 minute space here. Um, I'm going to give you a, uh, a kind of a contractor's perspective on accelerated roadway, uh, more than the design size. Dr. Epps asked me to give this uh, presentation, but no real scope on it. So I'm going to give you perspective from what I've done. Uh, again, I've been involved over the last 15 years or so in some of these large design build jobs. They're pretty schedule driven. That's the ones I've been involved with have little red crosses next to them. DFW I wasn't involved in, but to give you kind of an idea of, of what you're looking at, size and speed, um, you know, if you got anything from 1,500, 1,900 days, that kind of stuff on some of the large projects uh, in Denver and in Utah. Uh, down here in the one we're working on now, SH99, the Grand Parkway, that one's got 925 days and it's, not, and it's 38 and a half miles. But to give you a little idea of what that looks like, um, if you look at what you're trying to build in revenue per day, and another way, days per mile that you have to build a project like that, the uh, I-15 and I-25 were extremely schedule-driven because they were brownfield, very complicated. That's actually pretty fast, 116 days, 94 days. Um, the Grand Parkway is kind of a mixture of brownfield and greenfield, but you're at 24 days a mile is what you have to build that job. When you take the fact that there's about a three-month period between NTP 1 and 2, you're actually looking at just under 20 days a mile is what you have to build that project. So. Uh, that's kind of an idea of what we're talking about. We talk about accelerated roadway in my perspective. Um, in my previous years, I've never built anything that fast. So to me, that's accelerated. Uh, when you look at the three, in my experience, that were extremely schedule driven, the two on the top we talked about, the 99 project in Houston, uh, these stand out in my mind. And I've kind of looked through some of the other projects around the country. Uh, I have not found one anywhere in the nation that is more schedule driven than the Grand Parkway down in Houston. But when you look at the actual amount of work that was done on the two on top, the I-15, I-25, those, those are right up there as well. Um, again, scope on these things, just to give you an idea, real high picture, they're, they're big projects, 142 bridges, 16 miles of total reconstruction uh, on Utah. T-Rex, uh, still considered to be one of the most successful jobs in the country. Uh, of its type, 17 miles plus 19 miles of brand new uh, light rail corridor right next to it that we built. And then um, that one actually uh, uh, completed about 22 months ahead of schedule. And then down here on the Grand Parkway, uh, 116 bridges, three interchanges. A lot of you guys know a lot about that one, 30 and a half miles long. There's over a million square feet of wall that we're putting up, uh, about four, a little over four million square foot of deck on, on bridges. and. Um, we're, we're precasting beams um, and, and panels, that kind of stuff, about all, just under 3 million square feet of deck panel that we're casting. So there's, anyway, there's a lot of work that goes on in a short amount of time. Uh, all these jobs really incorporated all of, the, all of the elements you see here. Some of them were complete uh, control of those elements. Some of them had some of them done a little ahead of time, I-15 and 25. They got some of the right of way and utility stuff ahead of time. But for the most part, all those jobs incorporated elements were completely on right-of-way, utilities, environmental design, engineering, and everything else you see there. So why push these so fast? What, what makes someone want to push a job that, that fast? There's a lot of different reasons. In I-15, uh, that was a completely dilapidated freeway system. It was literally, when I got there, there was gaps between the bearing pads and the beams. There was the salt and everything rusted it apart. They were getting ready to have a major international event, and the decision was made, instead of going the traditional route, to uh, do it all at one time and get it done before the Olympics. And so that drove that decision, very economic. The uh, I-25, that was a completely over, over or under, under capacity road, over capacity road, and it was an outdated infrastructure. The gridlock there for the size that Denver had grown was just astronomical. You could not get anywhere, which resembles a lot of part of Houston as well, but it was actually worse. So that drove that decision. And then of course here in Houston, there's just tremendous economic growth, especially up in the Exxon Mobil and, and all the uh, developments that are going up around the north, uh, northwestern part of the, the city. So just in the Exxon Mobil and Southwestern Energy and Covenantry and all that kind of stuff, you're looking at about 15,000 people that are going to be all in about a, a mile radius that are coming into that area. So there's a lot of mobility needs. Those are things that drive decisions to push these jobs this fast. Um, I'm going to go through what I think are the key elements to getting a job done this fast. Some of the 
stuff that you saw in the previous presentation or elements that we're actually using on the project. Uh, there's a lot of design ingenuity, but in, in reality, the work that we're doing is not terribly complicated. They're real simple bridges. It's just a lot of embankment, a lot of paving. And so the things that make those jobs go fast are a combination of the uh, contracting model that's selected. I'm a big proponent of design build. I've been doing it a long time, so I'll be real biased on design build projects. Um, again, the design build team, the co-location, design innovation, these are all things I'll just briefly go through in this discussion. But these are elements that I feel are key to getting a job this big, this fast. Uh, starting out with the design build model, which again, I, I'm very biased on that. I think it's an effective model. It's been proven uh, on many big projects throughout the country to be the only way to get jobs these big done this fast. And um, there's a lot of reasons that's a lot more efficient. But one of the key elements, and this is a FHWA slide, I, I thought they did a pretty good job of demonstrating that overlap between design and construction is a key element. The, uh, the design bid or the design build contractor selected very early in the process pretty much takes over the risk, the design, the development, and everything else. And so you can selectively design areas that you want to get early construction started on. You can go to work and you can parallel the uh, design process through most of the project. I'll tell you in I-15 and I-25, there were uh, definitely times it was a, a build design job. So we were building and we let designers know what to put down. Um, it was just that, it really was. Um, and so that, that's a little quote there from the T-Rex job. Richard Clark was not the project director of the, uh, of the contractor. He was actually the owner's project director. But again, um, I can't quite read that. But I-15, a uh, little quote there from UDOT did a study on that, on the success of that job. Time was definitely the dominant factor. Uh, they felt that the uh, traditional approach was estimated to be eight and ten years to get that job done. I can tell you, having survived that one and talked to a lot of people throughout the process, uh, with all the unexpected things we came across, all the unknown conditions, all the things that were not expected, that would not have been eight or 10 years in a traditional model. That probably would have been 15 years. And so it was done in about four and a half years, um, which is a, a substantial improvement. Uh, one, one thing at the bottom is kind of a lesson learned, which is a key, key factor if you want a road done very, very quickly. The elements that take, you know, the, the construction is fairly, again, it's simple. You can control it. It's, it's big, and so you've got to have a lot of resources. But things like right-of-way, utilities, uh, the railroad, in this case, I-15 was laden throughout UP's uh, rail yard. Those things can slow and stop a project down very, very uh, effectively. And so the more of that type of stuff you can do up front and get the right-of-way and the utility agreements and, and certainly any kind of agreements with the railroad. I've worked with Union Pacific for well over a year just to get one agreement with them. Great people, they just don't move as fast on their process. they got a complicated process. So if you can get and attack these types of things early on, your success of getting the job built fast is going to be uh, quite a bit higher. Sorry about that. Once you kind of get through the design build decision and you get it contracted out, the uh, design build team is a, is a key component. And it's a lot more than just the JV team that's actually doing the contracting. It's, it's the whole group that's, that you're looking to, to uh, uh, build the success of the project off of. Obviously having uh, local designers and designers familiar with the local area as well as maybe a larger designer that has got some experience outside the region, some innovative design ideas that can help the project is important. Um, you know, contracting firms or, or especially firms that deal with utilities and right away and stuff like that. Uh, that's very important when you put together a, a uh, large project design build team if you want to get, again, if you want to get it done accelerated very, very quickly. Uh, to me, uh, the most important thing about building, and, I, and again, I've kind of built throughout the country, um, it's all about people. The, the work is pretty similar wherever you go. Uh, you, you learn how to do it, you get better at it, but it's about the people and the teams. Um, the partnership, the team approach, the co-location, decision-making process, that's all the relationship between the owner and the contractor. Uh, slowing a job down because of indecisions or getting balled up and not being able to uh, work through an issue is uh, not something that the general public is too interested in hearing about. What they want to know is how fast the road's going to be done and when it's going to be, you know, out of their out of their worries and available for driving on. So, the ability for the contractor and the owner to work well together is a key ingredient. 
that relationship was excellent in, uh, in Utah, in Denver, and here in, in Houston. We've had an excellent relationship. The local team in Houston has worked together very, very well. And, th and again, that's a very key element. And to me, it's one of the most important elements to getting these jobs done effectively. The, um, along with that, a, a strong part of making these things run smoothly is, is co-location of as much of the project team and the, and the owner and the contractor as you can possibly get in one house. The ability to walk down the hall or go down the elevator and solve a problem and come right back up 10 minutes later and then implement it is very key. I've uh, seen a lot of projects in the past before I was doing the big design build jobs where it would take days, weeks, or even months to solve a single issue. Uh, that's not effective when you've got a, a billion dollar enterprise that you're trying to push forward and you've got traffic tied up and all the other elements that go with that. So uh, having all these elements under one house uh, to me is probably one of those in, important things you can do decision wise on setting up your, your owner client uh, team to go build one of these things. Uh, once you get through the, uh, you know, the design and, and setting your, your team up, um, you need to be pretty open-minded to design innovation. I mean, you saw some things in the previous uh, presentation that were very, very effective on uh, projects I've, I've certainly worked around. The one that we're doing down in Houston, we are casting, we have our own casting yard, we are casting precast overhangs. Uh, that is very effective on, on bridges, all the deck panels, precast deck panels. Um, in my earlier years, you know, everything was done the old way and everything had to be shored up and it was just a nightmare. You come along here and see these deck panels and it, I mean, it'll cut the time in half or less that it takes to build a bridge. So that's a very effective uh, tool to use. Uh, but you've got to be kind of open-minded to the, some of the concepts that come in. Uh, there are some agencies that don't particularly like the whole turn the uh, contractor over to the design side. They kind of picture this coming out of it. Um, not a real good design, pretty innovative, but hard to drive on. So th that's the image that a lot of agencies I've, I've worked around in the past have of turning over their design to a private entity, right? Um, some of the things that, you know, I, I spent years in Hawaii blowing up and blasting anything that I embanked, right? Solid rock. And um, I went to Utah right after that and started building embankments out of foam blocks that I could throw around. Uh, that was not something that I was real familiar with and it seemed kind of ludicrous. But in fact, it was very effective <clears throat> and it's been used quite a few places. In the case that we used it, there were, uh, you know, the conditions in Salt Lake are pretty bad. And so the settlements are very, very uh, large. It takes a long time to surcharge them and wick them out and get them to uh, settle out. But what it does to the utilities below it is even worse. And so we were faced with having to relocate a tremendous amount of utilities to deal with this issue. Uh, instead, we came up and, and decided to use these uh, foam blocks to build 15, 20 foot fills on and actually built the freeway on foam blocks. And that's not necessarily a new idea, but it's one that if you haven't been around it, it's definitely a different idea. So. Um, Along with innovative design comes technology. Technology is, uh, has been huge. Over the last 10 or 15 years, I've personally seen the technology and equipment you use, just, it's just incredible, actually, it's mind-boggling. The stuff there on your uh, right is obviously some of the older equipment that you know, has built projects for many, many years. The, the, the work is really no different these days, but the stuff on the left is computer-operated. It's, it's automated, right? So you got a guy in the seat, but the machine essentially runs itself and the model is in the machine and it's cutting the grade all the time. Um, we use that on obviously the grading equipment you see here, but we also use it on pavers, asphalt, concrete pavers, the surveyor, everybody uses it. I mean, it's all one model and it, and it makes construction much more efficient. There's a little bit of a cost to it, but um, when I, uh, the first, the, the I-15 job, when I was on that one, I was given the responsibility to actually run a, a large organization of these motor graders with this automatic robotic control system. It's the first time the company had ever used them. And so we had to take a bunch of the older style equipment, like the stuff on your right, or at least the one up on top on your right, and convert the things because they hadn't done it before. And it, and it turned out to be quite the process. Nowadays, everything comes ready, ready set up. It's just a matter of plugging the technology in. What happens is you got a guy sitting in the central control, survey control guy. He's got the, the entire model of the project. And um, he's beaming that out real time, all the time on this project to all your equipment out of the field, whether it's pavers, whether it's whatever it is out there. It's, it's all receiving this information real time. 
And so the operator, he sees on his little screen in his cab, he sees that something doesn't look right, right? That's a problem. That means you've got to shut down, get someone to come out the machine, download the data, take it back. The survey manager's got to go through the whole thing, fix the problem, get it back out so they can go back to work. Not anymore. All he does, he calls the guy in the uh, central survey room, guy dials up his machine, he sees exactly what the operator see on his screen. He looks at it, he fixes it right away, it immediately goes back out to the machine via the cellular, and you're up and back running in 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, and you never, never miss a beat. Uh, everything on the job is run that way. It's all computer operated, computer you know, controlled. The modelers are able to fix problems, see what all the guys in the field are seeing, and uh, react to that very, very quickly and get things up and running without interruption to your operations. And again, that, that's a, uh, when you're talking about something as big as the Grand Parkway, that's a big, big uh, advantage. And again, the software we use, gotta get guys younger than I am to run it, but it's, um, it, it's key to uh, uh, making things go. We, we use everything from five cubics to manage the million, millions and millions of tons of material moving all over the job to our schedules, to our estimating, to our equipment maintenance, to everything else. So it's, it's a, a software intensive um, industry and everything talks to each other, so everything's interconnected. And again, these are all key things to invest in to get, get jobs this big done this fast. Um, means and methods. Uh, there's a lot to that. The aggressive phasing, obviously when you're designing it, you're looking, you're getting your constructability reviews, you're getting guys actually building the work to come in and find out what the absolute best way, fastest way to do it is. And so your ability to address that in design is a, is a major part of how fast the project's gonna go. Uh, resource maximization, um, you know, we run two shifts a day, seven days a week on just about every job I've been on for the last 15 years. Uh, that's aggressive, but it's, it's, it's a challenge to schedule people that way. So ability to get the resources and schedule people without literally running people seven days a week is, is one of the big challenges in your means and methods on getting these things done as fast as we uh, want to get them built. Obviously, uh, choice of forms, tools, supplies, that kind of stuff. Uh, sequencing of work activities, these are all elements that uh, are key in the planning of building something as accelerated as these projects. Um, biggest problem right now in the industry in this area is the labor market. Materials are going up and that kind of stuff, but the labor market right now is off the, off the wall. So uh, accelerated construction, you really got to look at your wage and benefit competition. Uh, we're competing against industrial jobs that are cost plus, very difficult for the lump sum type projects that we build in the heavy civil. Uh, very difficult to compete with that. Um, we recruit all over the nation for people to come down here. Uh, In-house training, because here obviously open shop, ability to train people to get work done efficiently. Uh, if you don't have good people working for you, you'll not get anything built. And so they're all things that really build on the accelerated construction success. The material market, a lot of decisions there, uh, down to the Grand Parkway, and really at I-15 and I-25, we, we uh, made the selections to uh, run all of our own batch plants, run all of our, uh, largely a lot of our material supplies was uh, vertically integrated, because we couldn't really rely on the market. Very large trucking fleets, nothing's worse than owning a bunch of trucks, except when you can't find trucks on the market, so then you gotta buy them all. So it's, it's all stuff that you have to do in order to guarantee that you can make your schedule. Um, the um, um, risk mitigation on, on being able to control your supply chain uh, is probably second to the labor shortage right now because supplies are hard to come, concrete's almost impossible to get in the city of Houston because it's going to the private developers. Even ExxonMobil, I drove around with them the other day and they, uh, you know, we go through about 100 people, a, 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 I guess a couple weeks, you know, 50 or so a week quit and we hire you know, another 50 or 100. ExxonMobil next to me has 4,000 people. We have about 2,000 on our job in, in Houston. ExxonMobil's got 4,000. They go through 400 people a, a month that quit, and they have to hire another 400 just to keep their 400. And they can't get a, a cubic yard of concrete. They asked me if I have problems with concrete. I said, not at all. I got five batch plants. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a problem that everyone in this state is uh, facing. And when you're trying to get work done as fast as all these projects are going, I know they're driven. I know there's quite a few other projects in there that are very schedule driven. The competition is fierce. So figuring out how to overcome that and keep projects on schedule, again, is one of the key factors. Again, you can look through, I just pulled a few articles throughout the last couple of weeks on labor market alone. And it's, uh, 
it's just gone through the roof. So that's a good problem to have on the economy. It's a real bad problem for us who are trying to build things. But, um, you know, again, people are the key to building these jobs. So uh, whether it's the relationship and building the partnerships with the owner, whether it's uh, getting the right people out in the field, uh, in, my, in my vision, you know, the technology and all that stuff is, is important. But getting the right people on an accelerated job like this is probably the biggest key to success. So, and I think that's a little early, but. <laughs>